let's move forward and learn more about hard disk drives. We've already learned that hard disk drives are a type of magnetic storage. And that means that they are storing, to store the zeros and the ones, you know, computers are all zeros and ones. And to store the zeros and ones, uh, we, are, we are storing those zeros and ones as magnetic charges. So the read-write head in the hard drive is actually uh, writing positive or negative charges onto the platters of the hard disk drive. And that's how we have the zeros and ones represented uh, and how we store them on the hard disk drive. So with hard disk drives, we're not actually writing zeros and ones onto the platters. Uh, what is happening is there's a positive and negative charge which is being written to the, the platter. And the, the, depending upon how that charge is arranged, uh, it represents either zero or one. Um, so that's, that's kind of how, how it works. Just a little bit of a review of some of the things we've already seen. We've got internal and external hard drives. We already know that. It's a little bit of a review. And we also have learned that this is the read-write head, and these are the platters right here. Something that's a little bit new is uh, you have the power connector right there and the SAT connector. So here's a question for you. Just by looking at this image right here, would this be an internal or an external hard disk drive? Ha, ha, ha. Can you answer this question? Looking at this image, would this be an internal or an external hard disk drive? Okay, generally speaking, this would be an internal hard disk drive. And, uh, you know, when you are, if you were to just see this, you know, it, this isn't what it'd look like if you ordered it from the company, obviously. What it would look like would just be like this. Let's get rid of that. What it would look like would be, uh, let's get rid of that. It would look like this when it came from, you know, the company. So these hard disk drives have been opened so that we could just kind of see what's going on on the inside. But when you got your hard disk drive, it would look like that. Hopefully it wouldn't look like this, where somebody has uh, taken a gun and put a few bullets into their hard drive, which is a really good way to make sure that nobody's going to be able to read whatever data you might have on that hard drive, take it out to the shooting range and just shoot it a couple of times. And uh, that data that used to be on this hard disk drive will probably be inaccessible. But this is what hard disk drives look like when you get them, an internal hard disk drive. And if you're to open up the cover, which, you know, when you do that, it actually will probably destroy the hard disk drive unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, if you're to open up the hard disk drive cover, that's what it looked like on the inside. You know, so, um, yeah, that's something we never do as uh, just sort of normal computer users is we never open up the covers on our hard disk drives. We actually want to keep these sealed because hard disk drives are, can be very susceptible to any kind of dust or debris that gets on the platter. So this would be an internal hard disk drive right here, generally speaking. You know, you could get some, some uh, connectors to use it as an external hard disk drive, but generally speaking, this is something you plug into your computer. And uh, if you were to, to do, um, if we were to go to computers here at Costco, shop all departments, computers, and go to external hard disk drives, we would see something like this, all right? So that's what an external hard disk drive would look like. These are actually really large units. These are smaller here. And this would just sit next to your computer and plug in with a USB. Um, and you also have the per portable hard disk drive. So this would also be what an external hard disk drive looks like. So learning some new tech terminology here. And we've learned that this read-write head will change the charges on the platters of the hard disk drive, and that's how we write the zeros and ones. A new thing to learn is that the platter is really, the, the read-write head is really close to the platter of the hard disk drive. So uh, here's the read-write head, here's the platter of the hard disk drive, and here's a human hair, just to represent how close that read-write head is to the platter. Here's a dust particle, here's a smoke particle. So when you get your hard disk drive, it's sealed in that case, right, like this. And that's because they don't want any debris or any dust or any hair or anything like that in there. Because if some of those things are in there and the read-write head is flying over the surface of this platter and it goes really, really, really quick, um, you know, if it hit a hair or a dust particle, it could create a head crash, right? So a head crash is when this head actually bumps the platter or mars the surface of the the platter so that in that area data could no longer be written because that area of the platter has been marred and um, so that, that's considered a head crash and that's also why you want to make sure that when you have a hard disk drive in your computer you're not jostling your computer around or dropping it when it's running or even when it's not running 
because this read write head could bounce and hit the surface of the, the hard disk drive uh, platter and create a head crash. And then you'll have an area of your hard disk drive which isn't uh, working and you might lose some data. And if it happens too much, the entire hard disk drive might stop working. Um, so that's a head crash. That's good to know about. So each of these platters here, right? Uh, there's, there's something that's good to know about a term here. We have logical file representation and physical file representation. Logical, physical, logical file representation and physical file representation. So, you know, what does that mean? Right here, if I go to my computer and go into Windows Explorer and then right click my hard disk drive and choose properties, I get this right here. And it looks like one disk, right? So that would be the logical file representation or the logical representation of what my hard disk drive looks like. The actual physical representation of my hard disk drive is going to be like this. So logically, right, logically, logically, it looks like one platter, logical file representation, right? Physically, it's actually several platters. So how is it actually physically represented? So those are uh, two terms that we hear about sometimes in talking about file storage is the logical representation versus the physical representation. So logically, we could just think of it as one disk, one drive, one platter, you know, but physically it's actually multiple platters. And the, the reason I'm pointing that out is because uh, we want to start to look at what's happening on each of these platters. And so each of these platters is basically divided up into little cubby holes. And you could think of these little cubby holes kind of like as little slots where you could put zeros and ones. And so if you only have a few zeros and ones, right, like a single file, like a small picture, you might be able to put, you know, all those zeros and ones into one little cubby hole. And so, you know, I'm just calling it cubby hole right now because that's kind of an image like picture like, you know, dormitory or somewhere where there's like a bunch of little mailboxes for everybody who lives in that dorm. And you could go in and put things in each of those little cubby hole mailboxes. So that's kind of how we uh, we break up the, these platters and store zeros and ones is we create these little areas which are called clusters. I like to think of them as cubby holes where we can stick zeros and ones. And so, you know, if we have a small file, we might only need to use one little cubby hole to put all the zeros and ones. But if we have a larger file, we might need to use several cubby holes to store all the zeros and ones. So I've been calling them cubby holes, but really what they're called is clusters. Right. And uh, the way we get clusters is and a cluster is the smallest kind of, you know, cluster is basically the cubby hole uh, where you put stuff. And the way we get clusters is we first divide up the platter of the hard disk drive into tracks. So just like at Fresno Fairgrounds, you know, there's the horse racing track and it just kind of goes in one big circle. These tracks here also, you know, just go in one big circle. So we first divide the platter up into tracks. So each of these platters is getting divided up you know, just sort of like, okay, here are the different tracks on the platter and the read-write head knows where those tracks are. And, uh, and then we divide each of those tracks up kind of like a pizza into sectors, right? So here's one sector, right? These are all the different sectors. Each of these little, each of these little things right there is a sector, right? And uh, so we divide all the tracks up into sectors and then a cluster is uh, two or more sectors, right? Uh, two or more sectors would be a cluster, and it's the smallest addressable space, right? The smallest addressable unit of disk score storage. So I think of them as cubby holes, and that's where we put the zeros and ones. And so how how do we do that? Well, there has to be some sort of a file system to keep track of what zeros and ones are where. So if we were to give each of these, you know, uh, each of these clusters uh, a name, and we might say like like, hey, this is a uh, you know track. This is cluster one on track A or something like that, right? Oh, this would be like five and six. So this would be 56 track A or whatever, right? Just come up with some arbitrary way to keep track of each of these little clusters. If we were, we were to create some, you know, naming scheme for each of those little clusters, then we could start to say, hey, the zeros and ones for this file are in cluster 12C. So we might say, oh, cluster 12C, that's right here. That's where those zeros and ones are. And then the read write head, would know, okay, I need to go to cluster 12C, that's right there, or wherever the hell it happened to be, just kind of creating an example. I just want to kind of generally tell you how hard disk drives work, right? But, but you know, it'd go to that, that cluster, it'd pull out the zeros and ones, and it'd be like, here's your file, here's your image. And if we had a, if we had a file that, 
required more cubby holes or more clusters, right? We could just say, okay, the zeros and ones for this file are in these four cubby holes slash clusters, right? I like calling them cubby holes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, are the, you know, all the zeros and ones for this file are in these four clusters. And then the read write head would go to those four clusters and pull out the zeros and ones. And so what that starts to look like, if you go to like Google and you search for file allocation table, because that's really kind of what's happening here is we've created a file allocation table and they used to abbreviate that as FAT. So you hear the, the different file systems for keeping track of your zeros and ones, like your filing stuff uh, is file allocation table. And then there's FAT32, file allocation table 32 bits. And then we have NTFS, which is new technology file system. And so this is kind of like the evolution from left to right, where this is older and crappier, and this is newer and better for how we kept track of our zeros and ones in these different cubbyhole clusters on our hard disk drives. And uh, so these file allocation tables were really just like, it was just a table, and it'd say this file is, the zeros and ones for that file are stored in this cubbyhole slash cluster, right? And so that's how that, that worked. And you can see if you go to Google and search for file allocation table, right? A file is stored across a number of clusters. So here's some examples of like, oh, this one file, which is magenta, right, would have zeros and ones stored in all these different clusters slash cubby holes, you know. And it's also kind of cool just to, you know, see, oh, yeah, wait, I learned about that. These are the tracks. There's the blue. Here are the sectors. Those are the sectors. And then the clusters, the smallest addressable unit, you know, of space on the hard disk drive, the cubby holes. Uh, are there, right? So that's kind of cool to notice. But the thing that uh, we're looking at here is file allocation table. And, you know, the file allocation table keeps track of where the zeros and ones are for each file, what cubby holes they're in. And so when we say, bring me this file, we choose to open that, the computer goes to the hard disk drive, and then the read-write head goes to each of these different areas on the platters, pulls the zeros and ones from there, and then uh, passes them back and they get, you know, you know, there's an order to them here. So again, this is just Todd's example. These aren't actually the, the right nomenclature. It's not actually the right nomenclature. How do you like that word, nomenclature? It's not actually the right sort of abbreviations for, you know, uh, this isn't what we call clusters when hard disk drives. I just did that to keep it simple. And uh, so, yeah, that's how it works. That's how hard disk drives work. And the last thing I have to say about logical file representation versus physical file representation, like logically we go into Windows Explorer and we say, hey, where's my file? And so I could come in here and I could say, you know, uh, you know, let me find a file. Okay, there's a file right there. And logically it looks like this, but in, in reality the physical representation of that file is that it is, uh, you know, it's a, uh, zeros and ones stored in these cubbyhole clusters on the platters of hard drives, which are positive and negative charges. So that's a little bit more about how hard disk drives work. Let me just make sure I've said everything here. Wikipedia has got some interesting information about file systems. And there's different file systems. If you drop down to the Microsoft Windows file system and then click that, it brings you to FAT, NTFS, and XFAT. And you can read about the different, you know, iterations of FAT and how you know, FAT32 had a, you know, size limit, you know, FAT16 had a size limit, you know, it's whatever, you can read about it down here. And then there's NTFS, New Technology File System. And uh, over here, you know, one of the biggest things about file systems is that, you know, FAT and FAT32 are really limited in size, but when we went to NTFS, we were able to go up to 16 uh, Tebabyte, terabyte, an exabyte, 16 exabytes. So the size went up a lot more with, with those. So ah, that's file allocation tables, that's hard disk drives, that's platters, that's logical file rep representation, physical file representation. Um, last thing to say is, you know, in a future video we're going to look at this, but what happens when you delete a file? What happens when you delete a file is this entry gets deleted, right? This entry gets deleted. And the zeros and ones are still there on your platter. Now that, that cubbyhole, 12C, is now the computer sees it as you could write something there because nothing's, you know, we don't need whatever might be there. But whatever is there is still there until something else gets written over it. And so that has pretty profound implications for security. When you delete a file, all that happens is the entry in the file allocation table gets deleted, but the zeros and ones are actually physically still on the hard disk drive platter. 
And uh, so we'll talk more about that and how you secure your data when you dispose of hard disk drives. You know, you could pretty much just do this exact thing that this guy did right here and shoot it. When I disposed of my last hard drives, I took a, a pickaxe and I set them out on the street and I drove a pickaxe through each of the hard drives. <laughs> so, you know, uh, for sure, those zeros and ones are going to be really hard to extract if somebody really badly wants them and maybe even impossible to extract. So, all right, new stuff about hard disk drives, forwards and onwards.